Well, it is the seventh day of January. The year is 2015. A very good evening to you and welcome to KTN Prime. My name is Wilson Buru. Thank you so much for joining us. Wherever you might be watching from, you might even be streaming online. We're glad you could join us for the day's top news, business and sports stories. Let's get started with a look at the headlines. Similar proposals were given to us. We went through them one by one, but they lacked the most important ingredient. Anything beyond this will drastically affect resource allocation to other critical sectors. Kupit goes the not way. Teachers' strike continues as government offer is rejected again. And when we came to 2007, when the deputy president was in ODM, Meshak was in PNU, which was also a direct contrast. Was he an ICC witness or not? Yebe's family says things are not adding up. How come the prosecution through Ken Wafula got access in its dealings to a defense witness, one Meshak Yebe. Most of the witnesses who have information about uh, the death of, uh, of Meshak are not very comfortable in talking to the police. Another spanner in the works says Jubilee wants activist Ken Wafula probed over Yebe's murder. And terror in France. Gunmen killed 12 at a Paris media headquarters. You are tuned into the most comprehensive bulletin in the country and our sign language interpreter is William Silla. Let's start with the teacher strike which is set to continue after talks between the government and the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education teachers collapsed only a day after similar talks with NAT also failed. That's right. The government offered several allowances to Kupert but the union says that its members will not resume teaching unless the government meets its demands for a salary review. Rita Tanina kicks, off, kicks us off with that story. A day after talks between the government and the Kenya National Union of Teachers collapsed, it was the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers' turn to negotiate with the government over the teachers' pay demands. And just like the Tuesday night meeting, the script was the same. The salary component was lacking and therefore Whatever proposal they gave uh, was hinged on the basis of basic pay. The government tabled the same offer it gave to NAT with leave, house and hardship allowances as well as mortgage and car loans for those in job group G to R. But Cooper maintains the government has to honor the union's demand for a 150% pay increase. job evaluation. The government says its offer will cost it an extra 9.3 billion shillings. The government's offer is massive and anything beyond this will drastically affect resource allocation to other critical sectors of the economy like the security sector. Following the collapse of the talks, Kupert says the strike is still on. And we want to assure the public and teaching fraternity that Badu Mapambano, the struggle continues. The government maintains the strike is illegal and striking teachers will face consequences. Kupert's position on the strike is expected to have an impact on the Form 1 selection and admission process since a long strike could mean a short first term for those joining secondary school. Kupert says it is open for more negotiations. It remains unclear when the next round of talks will be held as learning in public schools remains paralyzed. We shall not be moved to Nataka, Pesa, Pap. Rita Tinina, KTN. 
no, due to the teacher strike, Kenyan students in public schools have so far lost 15 hours of learning time that will never be recovered. Stakeholders in the education sector are now concerned that the perennial teacher strikes are costing students vital time in class. As KTN's Asha Mulu now reports, the short-lived strikes could be degrading Kenya's struggling public education sector. In a month, 14-year-old Jane Amondi will be joining high school. Though she scored 391 marks out of 500 in her KCPE, Jane is not happy. She was always an above-average student, she says, but she's convinced that the unending teachers' strikes in 2013 and 2014 affected her final years of primary study. So we decided to teach others what they don't know, like I was good in mathematics. So I'll go to the board and like starting, uh, start discussing with them some topics that they didn't understand better with the teachers. And another people who is good in another subject does the same. If they were there, they could have explained better the things that I didn't know. Since they were not there, uh, I didn't get them better now. And the part out of for that, come and buy. Like Helen, the industrial action by teachers has left a bitter taste for many Kenyan parents. Lobby group Elimuyetu Coalition wants a radical measure from the president. We want to say no to the manipulations of the unions and now demand that you, Mr. President, direct immediately the closure of all public schools in Kenya and organize for national dialogue to provide a lasting solution to this menace. A 2013 survey by World Bank revealed shocking details of the state of teaching in Kenyan public schools. Out of 100 public school teachers, only 55 were found teaching in class. 27 were in the school staff room but not teaching. 18 were absent from school. Uwezo Kenya in a 2012 survey also revealed the effects of poor teaching in public schools. Out of 100 children in classes 4 and 5 in public schools, more than 50 could not understand a class 2 story. A long time ago there was a... Last year, KTN witnessed how a class 2 student in a private school could read a story from their level comfortably. But a class 7 pupil from a public school given the same passage could hardly string a sentence. She, she loved it very much. She did not, ma she did not want the animals to eat it. We are opposed to the blanket statement of increasing everyone's salary, irrespective of whether they taught, irrespective of whether they were drunk when they were supposed to be in class, irrespective of whether they did not show up in class in the first place. We are saying no. As opposed to the blanket thing, we want to see a debate on productivity. How did you perform as a teacher? so that we can say, do you deserve a promotion or do you even deserve a demotion? On average, teachers' strikes in Kenya last about five days. This means that students in public schools lose about five hours learning time per day during the strike. But while the effects of these strikes are yet to be measured and quantified, only students like Jaina Mondi can tell of how the strikes have affected them. Asham Wilu. KTN. Some worrying statistics about the state of public education. Now, a day after Deputy President William Ruto, through his lawyers, stated that Meshach Yebe was a defense witness, the family of Meshach has maintained that they're not aware that their kin was a witness for the defense. The family instead pointed out that the deceased Yebe's divergent political stand with William Ruto stood out from the 2002 general elections. Mercy Kandir reports on the confusion that has now rocked Yebe's family. Her eyes tell it all, a story of confusion, one that just doesn't add up. Her husband, Mesha Kiebe, disappeared on the 28th of December 2014 and was found dead in River Yala on the Nandi County side. Lillian Yebe and her now deceased husband had taken their sick child to the Tarbo Health Center. They stop your vomiting. <laughs> Na kaenda kunua maji. Na tangu siku hiyo wajai rudi. 
The International Criminal Court has since issued what it called a clarification on the issue, but the statement appeared to confuse matters even more. The Hague-based court confirmed that Mesha Kebe was not a prosecution witness, but that he had been offered residence elsewhere, which he did not take up, choosing to return to Eldoret. It was still mere suspicion, but uh, Meshak had not formally informed us that he was an ICC witness. So I cannot allege or I cannot confirm that fact. Neither can I deny the same because most of his friends seem to be um, indicating that he must have had some association with the ICC cases going on at The Hague. <laughs> Adding a new twist to the mystery tale was Deputy President William Ruto. Through his lawyer, Karim Khan, Ruto's lawyer said Yebe was one of the Deputy President witnesses at the International Criminal Court. But the family maintains their kin was not an ICC witness, but had reported on September last year that his life was in danger. don't have a direct um, communication as to how Meshach related to the deputy president. But what I know is the deputy president was uh, the party leader for URP, whereas, whereas Meshach uh, stood independent or away from that. And as you know, the deputy president was uh, the, the current appointment in 2002 while Meshak was in NAC. So, of course, that is those were two main opposing sides. And then when it came to 2007, when the deputy president was in ODM, Meshak was in PNU, which was also a direct contrast. So there seemed to have been some relationship that is likely to be in opposite direction. Every time deputy president, let's say like, like last year, akiwa URP, ya kukwacha maingine. A day after his disappearance, his mother and a close friend received a text message from a Ugandan line. The message, partly in Kalenjin, stated, I hope you're all okay. I went to Uganda urgently. I hope you're all fine. We are with Bensuda's officials, Patrick and Lugusa. I'm fine. Don't worry. It's Meshak and this is my number. Two days later, on the 31st, the body was recovered by the police but identified by the family on the 3rd of January. Um, I personally identified him uh, by the looks, first of all, of his face, because the facial structure, though, though uh, significantly uh, affected or destroyed, we could still find uh, the figure. We saw the body of Meshak clean, and the mortuary attendants this, they did confirm to me, actually, that the body was brought in naked. However, the police said uh, brought in a jeans trouser that was torn, significantly torn, and say this is the the, the, the trouser that was in that mesh, that the body was in at the time of retrieval. So. It's this contradicting information that the family is trying to piece together. The burial has tentatively been set for Saturday. But this matter, it appears, may take longer to lay to rest in the minds of many here, including Lillian, who knows that life is different now. She is expectant and has two children to fend for. Now, the only breadwinner the children will know. Masi Kandia KTN, Wasengishu County. Well, still on that story of Meshak Yebe and Jubilee MP is now want activist Ken Wafula to be arrested as the prime suspect in the murder of the man they insist was a witness for the Deputy President William Ruto at the ICC. Quoting the so-called dossier on activists allegedly involved in the recruitment of witnesses for the ICC in 2011, the Jubilee MPs claimed that Ken Wafula had considered Yebe a dangerous person who should be dealt with. But speaking in Eldoret earlier Today, the activist Ken Wafula also expressed concerns over threats on the lives of ICC witnesses. Meshak Yebe was a witness of the defense. How come the prosecution through Ken Wafula got access in its dealings to a defense witness, one Meshak Yebe? On what grounds 
are they collaborating with the defense witness? To what extent has the OTP interfered with the defense in this manner? Are there filings or official documents to establish the prosecution bona fide? Late Meshach really was close to me. Is that uh, there was an attempt by the defense uh, to bribe Meshach from being a witness, a prosecution witness at the ICC. And uh, this plan was actually, uh, the plan was developed at Kaptagat Hotel early last year. Uh, and uh, the, this witness, I think they ended into some form of negotiations and uh, a certain amount of money was agreed upon but that money, the amount agreed upon did not reach this witness. So there's been a lot of questions actually, definitely more questions than answers about Yebe's death. But the question we want to ask you this evening is whether you support Dwala's position that activists should be probed over Yebe's murder. We'd like to hear from you on that this evening. That's right, and you can get us uh, certainly on SMS. 22155 is the SMS line, and on Twitter you can get us on at Kachingira, at Wilson underscore Buru. When you start, when you write your SMS, make sure you start with a yes or no, so that you are able to pull that into a... Our uh, poll results at the end of this live newscast will continue to sample some of your views on Twitter and SMS as this bulletin continues. Now, as we move on, in an incident that has shocked the world, 12 people were killed after two heavily armed men stormed a French magazine's office. The brazen attack spilled over to the streets where two police officers were killed before the attackers made an escape. KTN's Edith Kamani reports on the terror attack that has definitely shocked the world. At the Charlie Hebdo offices, death came in the morning. These disturbing images showing the last of what is believed to have been a five-minute killing spree. At the end of it, journalists of the satirical paper and two officers left dead. Reports indicate the gunmen stormed the magazine newsroom where an editorial meeting was taking place and opened fire. The magazine is known for its daring humor, especially on religious matters. In November of 2011, the officers of the magazine were firebombed after they published a cartoon depicting the Islam prophet Muhammad. Speculation is rife that the magazine may have been targeted because of a tweet showing a cartoon of the Islamic State militant group leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Police have been in pursuit of the attackers since they fled the scene and it is believed the gunmen switched cars at some point during their escape. French President François Hollande, who arrived at the scene shortly after the attack, said the French people were attacked for being a country of liberty. Global leaders, including U.S. President Barack Obama and U.K. Prime Minister David Cameron, also condemned the attack shortly after it happened. Edith Kimani, KTN. And the public today got an opportunity to view the body of the late Fidel Odinga at the Lee funeral home here in Nairobi. Yes, this came as leaders continued trooping in to Raila Odinga's home to give their condolences. <laughs> Deputy President William Ruto today visited Raila Odinga's home in Karen to condole with the family on the demise of their son Fidel Odinga. At the Lee Funeral Home in Nairobi, it was an emotional session as both leaders and members of the public view Fidel's body. The public viewing session took place between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., the start of the late Fidel Odinga's send-off ceremony. The body will Thursday be removed for a requiem mass at All Saints Cathedral in Nairobi. <laughs> they say Fidel Odinga's grave will be ready by 10 p.m. Wednesday night, ahead of the burial slated for Saturday, the 10th of January. Fidel would be laid to rest next to the grave of his grandfather, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, who was buried in 1994. Sharon Momani, KTN. 
Well, in Bondo, preparations are being finalized for Fidel Odinga's final send-off on Saturday. And a crucial part of those preparations is the digging of the grave. <laughs> Julius Ocheng pours a traditional drink into what will be Fidel Odinga's final resting place. Before giving it to his colleagues to sip in rounds, Julius together with six fellow grave diggers have chosen to do this voluntarily as Fidel Odinga was a close friend to their youth group. Sisi, tunai mchimba, lakini kirotu alikuwa shuja kwetu sisi mavijana. Sisa tumetupa mmoja wetu. Sana sana kwa iboma, ya njiwa tukua tunashirikiana na esu sana sana. Sana sana, ye, roughly 73. Kwanza ero yangu ni mbaya sana. Eh, si kwa furaha yangu kuja kufanya hii kazi. Jia nini hii kabla ya Fidel. Ju nimepoteza mtu mwingine alikuwa ananisaidia. Kabla kwanza aliniambia kitambo ati oh, kijana yako ambaye kama mtu mmoja atakuja ku perform well kwa masomo atakuja kunisaidia. <laughs> According to Julius, who has been a grave digger for over 20 years, these rituals will be done soon after they finish digging the grave. Wakati nimemwaga hiyo pombe ndani, wazee wanaikubali hapo hivyo mahali hata kama ilikuwa ni ngumu inaenda kurejea. Eh, na kazi itaendelea hadi ifike mwisho. You drink na iko chakula iko. Eh, chakula iko kabisa lazima tushibe ndio tufanye hiyo kazi. Natamani ilikuwa mambo nasema kama ni nataka kusika ile mtu pale wase ndio ilikuwa anafanya nini? Nasimamia. Ati nasema hivi na hivi lakini sikisi ni watu wa Kristo. The grave diggers charge close to 4000 shillings for a grave and this they say is a well paying job as they are always on demand kama mimi mimi mzee mimi nalisha familia sasa nikitoa kitu kidogo hivi nikipiga kona na zaonja kidogo lakini pale familia nataka pia wanakula 90% na mimi nichukue time due to fidel odinga's friendliness and kind heart towards the people of nyamira village in bondo other youths have already joined the grave digging exercise. This will be Fidel Castro Odinga's final resting place and according to these grave diggers who began their work soon after midday, they hope to complete their job by 10 p.m. Victor Ogale, KTN, Bondo, in the county of Sia. You're watching KTN Prime. Let's uh, quickly remind you of our big cue this evening. The question we're asking you is whether you support Dwali's position that activists should be probed over your base murder. And he did single out uh, Ken Wafula as someone who might have answers to this very, very sad incident. I'll just read a quick tweet here from Ryan Samir. He says, yes, if Ken's allegations are genuine, let him be probed, but avoid politicizing the issue. Killing does hurt. Of course, here the family are the real losers in this situation. Very, Harriet. very hard for them. Absolutely. Harriet Anyonje here says, no, why should they? And yet, they aren't suspects of Yebe's murder. These are, of course, your views. Um, MC Trigger here says, uh, Sashan contradicts the family side of the story. Um, Sky T. Karaoke says, indeed, activists should be probed. Imagine Yebe was an office of the prosecution witness. They could be singing. If Yebe was an of OTP witness, they could be sing singing a different tune. So, of course, your views continue sending them on at Kachungira at Wilson underscore Mburu. And on the SMS is, to, the SMS line rather, is 22155. Start with a yes or no. We'll continue sampling your views as the bulletin continues. Take a short break now. Don't you go away. We will have much more after this. Just ahead, a woman attacks her husband for failing to refill the cooking gas. You're watching KTN Prime. Welcome back. You are certainly watching KTN Prime. Now, police in Nairobi have arrested a woman who allegedly caused serious burns on her husband's body after he failed to carry out an assignment in the house. She's accused of throwing a burning stove at her husband for failing to refill the cooking gas. At the St. Francis Community Hospital in Kasarani, 
Peter Karaoke gives a blank stare to the attending nurses. At a glance, he looks rather calm, but he knows too well how lucky he is to still be alive. On the 11th of November last year, he says his wife came home and started a confrontation that would lead Karaoke straight to a hospital ward. She, she asked me, do you know that I can burn you? I, I dared her to do that. I dared her to do that and then I, I, didn't, I didn't know that, that she, was, she was serious. His wife allegedly threw a burning stove at him for failing to refill a cooking gas as he had earlier promised. Peter says they have had differences before but not of this magnitude. She was laughing. She was laughing at me and telling me this, this is just about the beginning. He was rushed to the hospital having suffered serious burns. He's undergone grafting in theater. Uh, he's doing daily dressing and uh, daily cleaning and dressing. And the wounds are showing a lot of improvement. Peter says his wife has not come to visit him in hospital. She has been telling me I'll do something, I'll harm you one day and you and your people you'll regret. One day you, pe you, people and your, uh, you and your people you'll regret. They had been married for 11 years and have been living in Nairobi's Utawala estate with their two children. His sisters reportedly brought him here at St. Francis Hospital after realizing that his wife was unwilling to get him proper medical care after the incident. Now as you are, you are going to the hospital, she continued, she continued quarreling. Uh, it's like she was telling me, I was telling you, I was telling you, he has since filed a case at the Roy police station over battery charges. The police are searching for the wife. Timothy Otieno, KTN. Now, a security consultative meeting of North Rift and Upper Eastern leaders has resolved that a parliament should fast track the legis legislation to make cattle rustling a capital offence. And as Patrick Amima reports, Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nkaiseri says the chiefs who will allow footprints of stolen animals into their locations will be held responsible and locals forced to replace stolen livestock. Elected leaders drawn from Trukana, West Pokot, Baringo, Samburu, Laikipia, Isiolo and Marsabit counties that are prone to cattle rustling converge in Nairobi for a consultative security meeting on rampant insecurity in North Rift and Upper Eastern regions of Kenya. Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nkaiseri convened the meeting that brought together senators, members of the National Assembly and governors from the mainly personalist communities that inhabit the two regions. I'd like to applaud all my colleagues too who've come and who are committed that we will end this issue once and for all in 2015 and we are very committed. Leaders held three closed-door sessions that lasted six hours due to what those privy to the meetings said was the complexity of the matters being discussed. The leaders were drawn from different personalist communities who have a long-term suspicions against each other. The leaders agreed on the bomber declaration which resolved a raft of measures to deal with cattle rustling and promote peace and security. They resolved that Parliament should fast track enactment of legislation to make cattle rustling a capital offence. The Cabinet Secretary for Interior was asked to enforce the law to deal with impunity by instilling punitive measures on communities that encourage cattle rustling. Mechanisms have also been instituted to track stolen animals and ensure those responsible replace them and are held to account. The security law is not supposed to be popular. It is meant to secure the citizen and their property. If the footprints of cattle reach your location, you will be responsible. And that particular location, the leaders, the assistant chief, the chief, we will get the equal number of cattle from your location if you allow those cattle to disappear from your location. Other measures agreed on include return of government arms that had been taken by bandits, especially in Capedo and Baragoy attacks. Communities will be involved in disarmament process by creating modalities for comprehensive and simultaneous disarmament. A comprehensive livestock census and branding will also be undertaken. The government was eyed to resolve county boundaries disputes through harmonizing constituency and administration boundaries. It was also agreed that partnership between the national and county governments should be enhanced in the management of security in counties. However, previous disarmament exercises have been criticized by leaders, with some even calling for the withdrawal of the military that is involved in mopping up illegal firearms. 
Will the government get total support this time round? By their presence here and the resolution passed here, it's a decision which has been reached and everybody has agreed. The leaders agreed to have the National Cohesion and Integration Commission to monitor persons who incite communities to engage in conflicts and take appropriate action. Patrick Amimo, KTN. A very good evening and welcome to KTN Business. My name is Abi Agina. Kenya's shilling weakened slightly on Wednesday to lows last seen more than three years ago to hit 91 shillings against the dollar. Traders reckon that the slide was pushing up demand for dollars from businesses wary of a further dip. The shilling was trading at 91 shillings, edging down from Tuesday's close of 90 shillings and 90 cents. The last time the shilling traded at these levels was in late 2011. The stub at the 91 level was prompting some extra demand from companies and other investors concerned that the currency would slide further, traders said. Hmm. Well, the Kenya Revenue Authority has emphasized that stock brokers and agents carry the full responsibility of collecting and accounting for the capital gains tax as far as stock market transactions are concerned. The levy which is making a comeback since it's in take I beg your pardon. The levy which is coming back uh, from suspension in 1985 is charged on profits realized from sale of shares, securities, property and other assets. The government has been implementing it at 5% from the 2nd of January this year. KRA has, however, had it rough with stock brokers who have held to the opinion that their systems do not have the required capacity to collect and account for the levy. KTN's Charles Gitonga has the details. Last year, the Treasury did announce the introduction of capital gains tax amid hue and cry from property dealers and stock brokers. But the government stuck to its guns, defending the decision. Treasury's position was that the capital gains tax will aid in financing the 1.8 trillion shilling budget. From capital gains tax, KRA is projecting to raise about 7 billion shillings in 2015. But as far as stock market transactions are concerned, the taxman is not having it easy as stock brokers claim that they are not legally mandated to collect the levy on their behalf. I think the main challenge is, is on the obligation of the broker to, to, to calculate uh, the, the gains and losses experienced by an investor. I think one of the main challenges is you know, upgrading the system. How do you ensure that the system is upgraded in such a way that such transactions can be calculated automatically? The last six days have been marked with some confusion at the Nairobi Securities Exchange as investors took a back seat to understand how the Kenya Revenues Authority will implement the capital gains tax. And now the authority is out to shed more light on this issue. The responsibility to collect and account for capital gains tax lies with the stockbroker or agent handling the sale and transfer of shares or bonds. The taxman further says that he has reversed the guidelines as regards to the levy. Jiraini notes that they have issued key players such as the Nairobi Securities Exchange, Capital Markets Authority and the Association of Brokers with clear reference prices in respect to share transactions. The guidelines read that for stocks acquired before January 1998, the highest share price achieved at the stock exchange in 1998 will be the reference price. For stocks acquired between 1998 and December 2004, the reference price will be the highest share price achieved in the year of purchase. For shares acquired from January 2005 to date, reference will be made to the actual price as reflected in the central depository system. So far into this year, stockbrokers have shied away from collecting and accounting for this tax, which means that KRA has missed the opportunity to net in millions of shillings. We are prepared and ready to implement it. And we are actually implementing it. The taxman now says that talks are ongoing between them and other stakeholders on how this tax will be implemented smoothly and effectively. Charles Gitonga, KTN. Well, many thanks there, Charles. Online trading is making significant inroads in Kenya, even as more consumers opt to shop online. In an exclusive interview with KTN Business, Olex Country Manager Peter Ndiangui shares on what is fueling the growth of online shopping and gives a market outlook for 2015. In the last uh, two years, what we've seen is 
uh, Kenyans take uh, online buying and selling with uh, tremendous speed. Mm -hmm. uh, almost uh, unimaginable uh, about three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And what we saw in uh, this Christmas especially was that a lot of people are trading uh, basically their used items. Uh, I think in preparation for uh, uh, the holidays and they wanted to make some quick cash and go maybe to their uh, uh, homes mm -hmm. and others maybe waiting to uh, make some money for school fees. So we saw people actually selling more and uh, the buying uh, uh, aspect of our platform was uh, probably not as huge as the selling part. Uh -huh. yeah. Would you maybe have any statistics in terms of the traffic um, looking at uh, the activity that you witnessed over the festive season? Yeah, I think we saw uh, on daily average uh, over uh, 5,000 people every day uh, trading their items. Uh, especially on uh, just day before Christmas, but actually that was uh, a law of what we see. Uh, I think people, when they start going for holidays, they probably don't sell as much as when uh, they are during their week or during the weekend. But it's still quite a huge activity, mm -hmm. seeing uh, you know thousands of people making uh, sales over the uh, of our platform. What's really fueling online trading? One of the things is uh, cheap. Uh, mobile phones. Sure. Uh, the other thing has been uh, uh, cheap broadband, mm -hmm. which is, uh, of course, has happened because of the fiber optic uh, that has been laid across the country. And the third thing has been Kenyans being quite tech savvy and wanting to try new things. Mm -hmm. So I think a combination of things has happened that has driven uh, the online business to. Uh, uh, in, in a way that we never saw this happen before. And I think this is just a starting point. I think we're going to see tremendous growth in uh, e-commerce, especially in our own country where retail is still pretty much informal. Mm -hmm. uh, what we'll see most likely is that uh, going forward, uh, we will have different channels that serve different uh, users. Well, Uchumi Supermarket's rights issue has been oversubscribed by 83% to hit 1.6 billion shillings against a target of 895 million shillings. This means that the retail chain's 99 million shares that were up for grabs at 9 shillings each have started trading at the Nairobi Securities Exchange as the firm seeks additional capital to finance its regional growth plans. Well, let's now take a look at the financial report. KTN Business. Welcome to KTN Sports. Now it's a waiting game as athletics governing body Athletics Kenya will deliver its verdict on Boston and Chicago marathon champion Rita Jepto's failed drug test on the 15th of this month at the Federation's headquarters. Jepto, whose sample B confirmed use of a banned substance late last year, will be given an opportunity for a fair hearing by the Federation's Medical Commission before reading out its punishment. Athletics Kenya, Kenyan athletes, as well as track and field fans across the world will certainly be hoping for a bright 2015 season after a difficult 2014 season characterized by numerous failed drug tests. For Athletics Kenya, however, in the immediate to-do list, we'll be dealing with the pending case on Boston and Chicago Marathon champion Rita Chaptal's failed drug test. Uh, I would like to confirm that uh, the Medical Commission met and uh, they have fixed the date for the hearing on the 15th of this month, that's next Thursday, and that's when we shall meet and uh, decide and give the verdict. Chapter's sample B returned positive late last year, confirming the sample A results in an out-of-competition test conducted before her Chicago Marathon exploits. 
The Athletic Kenya Medical Commission will deliver its verdict as it's stipulated by the World Anti-Doping Agency Code of Conduct. It is the federation that actually uh, punishes the athlete and now communicates, communicates the punishment to, to the IF. But IF, 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 for example, if IF also finds that we are so lenient, they will also interject. They say, no, 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 no. Why do you give one year? We have interjected. That particular case should go for two years. They can also do that. So we really must make sure we follow the rules to the letter. Chapter's positive test came just before she was crowned the World Marathon Majors at an awards ceremony that was postponed. And according to David Okeo, a ruling on what will become of her prize money and trophies will also be discussed. If you have won and you tested positive, you have to return. Yeah. But you see, in Rita's case, she had not been paid the money uh, for, for this particular event. As the track and field fraternity awaits Rita Chaptal's verdict, tougher sanctions on athletes who are found guilty of violating anti-doping agency rules were effected from the first of these months. From this year, first of January, if you make an offense like this one, it's four years straight. There's no negotiation about that. So I would like to say, I don't know how medical commission will come out with it, but you see Rita's case um, was for 2014. So I cannot tell you now whether she's going to have two years or four years, but it will depend on what the medical commission will decide on that day. Athletics Kenya disclosed that doping tests will be conducted in all its local competitions this year. Lynn Washira, KTN Sports. KTN Weather. Well, time to wind up the bulletin tonight. And uh, we did ask you whether you support Adin Duale's position that activists should be probed over your base murder. I believe that we have the result. There you are on your screen. That's right. 53% say yes, they do support that position. And 47% say no, it was a rather close one. Thank you very much for your opinions uh, this evening. And we've got a few here that we'll read out. Uh, one here from Daniel Osiemo. He says, it's sad that politics has been brought to serious matters like death. And he says it's a definite no for him. Um, just as Obuya here says yes, judging from the email given by Duale, there is, no, there is need for investigations. Well, Henry Aketi says on Twitter that he cannot support Duale because the contradicting statements directly link the murder with the Ruto camp and not ICC. Mm. Um, let's see another one here from... Uh, Daniel Osiemo who says, no, it's sad that politics has been brought to serious matters like death. Well, thank you for your views this evening, for sharing them with us. And our sign language interpreter tonight was William Silla. We're just about to head out. But before we do that, we're going to hand you over to Jeff mm. Koinange. And boy in it's town. his birthday. It's, a, it's his today. birthday. I don't, know whether, right. I don't know whether he can hear us. Jeff, um, so sh should we sing a happy birthday? I, I think it's only fitting. It's only right that we All do right, that. Let's, let's do this. Okay. All right. One, two, two three. Happy birthday, birthday dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff, we're terrible videos. at this, but happy <laughs> birthday, and it's great to see you on happy JKL. Happy birthday, Jeff, <laughs> and happy new year, by the way. That too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from us here and uh, on Mombasa Road at the Standard Group Center, enjoy the rest of your viewing. Enjoy Jeff Koinange live. I'm sure he has some uh, cracking stuff this year. Uh, my name is Wilson Buru. See you tomorrow. I'm Nancy Kachingira. Good night. Wilson, Nancy, I'm going to recommend some uh, singing lessons for you both, but uh, <laughs> I get the picture. Thank you very much for those lovely birthday wishes. And to tens of thousands of people out there who've been wishing me all day today, thank you very much for those wonderful wishes. And by the way, my guest today just happens to share a birthday with me.
and some other great folks out there. Ken Jiru is on yes. the bench today. We're going to be talking to you in a couple of minutes. Yes, happy birthday, Ken. Thank you, Jim. I never and, knew and, this. And happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a great coincidence. Shall we sing that later? We shall sing okay. at the end of the program. The, we sing to each other. In the, <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> we've got a great show lined up for you today, Wilson, Nancy. Tell the folks out there it's all about the state of the nation. Kenya, the way forward, from teachers striking to the security bill to folks being jailed for abusing our leaders, etc., etc., etc. It's going to be a great show. Hashtag is JKL, Twitter handle at Kainanga Jeff, and at Ungwana Kenya. Make sure you start tweeting. Let's start talking. It's a new year. Let's do this. JKL, we'll be back in a moment. <laughs>